So, foreign hopper cycles are an explanation of the way that we get to enthalpies of formation. It's not as simple as taking solid sodium and chlorine gas and putting them in a container and you magically have salt. That's not how it happens. That's how it appears to happen to an observer, but it's more complex than that. So, a Born-Haber cycle for the formation of sodium chloride The first thing that has to happen is your sodium has to go from solid to gas. This is called atomization of sodium. That requires energy. And that's an enthalpy. It's called the enthalpy of atomization. The, the energy required to go from solid sodium to gaseous sodium. Once we have atomized it, we can ionize it. That requires energy. Taking an electron from an atom requires energy. So we used to call this the first ionization energy. We still can. But now that we're talking about enthalpies, it could also be called the enthalpy of ionization. Energy per mole of sodium that we're trying to ionize. Trying to go from sodium to sodium plus. That requires energy. Why? Why does it require energy to remove an electron from an atom? Emma? You were on the right track. Electrostatic attraction. Yeah. The nucleus is holding on to the electron. So to pull it away from its nucleus is going to require energy. All right. The next step in all of this, we have diatomic chlorine gas. And we have to break it apart. That requires energy. We're breaking a bond. It's a bond dissociation energy. Whatever the enthalpy of that bond is, is the energy required to pull it apart. This is still gas. Once we have our gaseous chlorine, we have to ionize it. This is the opposite of removing an electron. This is adding an electron. This is an ionization energy. This is electron affinity. We haven't really talked a lot about that. You said adding an electron. Mm -hmm. Electron affinity. This is an exothermic process where Ionization energy is an endothermic process. To remove an electron requires energy. Adding an electron is going to release some energy. At this point, we have sodium ions in the gaseous form, chloride ions in the gaseous form, and we can bring them together
to make salt. And the way that we would find the enthalpy change for this is by adding up the enthalpies for all those steps. Step one, sodium solid to sodium gas. There's an enthalpy for that. Step two, sodium gas to sodium ion. Oh, ionization energy. There's an enthalpy for that. The next one, chlorine diatomic, chlorine molecules, to a singular chlorine. There's an enthalpy. You have to break a bond. Chlorine atom to chlorine ion. There's an enthalpy for that, electron affinity. Then once you have all of those together, you can put the two ions and make sodium chloride. And it's the addition, just like in Hess's law, of all of those enthalpies to get the enthalpy of this reaction. It requires multiple steps. So in Chem 1A, when we talked about this reaction and we just simply said, oh, sodium reacts with chloride to make sodium chloride. Yes, that's true. But in the background, there's all these other things that have to happen first to even get to this point. And that's the Born-Haber cycle, is look, focusing on the individual steps required to get to this point. Does this make sense? Maybe. In terms of questions that they'll ask you on the test about this, it will be things like, you know, you have to go from sodium solid to sodium gas. Just understanding that there are little tiny parts that have to happen first. They're not going to ask you to do the whole, like, cycle or anything like that. Okay, that's it. The rest of this, there's page 20, 21, and 22 in your notes. You just need to read those. So you need to read pages 20 through 22 in your notes and then work on the Born-Haber cycle worksheet. That's it.